Hey guys, it's Papa Jeff here, and welcome to this special weekend broadcast of Papa Jeff's America. It's Saturday, September the 26th of 2020, and it's 85 degrees in Houston at the OG Studios. And we wanted to drop a special broadcast in on you because we've had some uh, conversations here at the organization, and I have been posting a lot of uh, social media um, about Trump and probably more about Trump than about Biden. Um, I think Biden kind of stands on his own because Trump is just doing what he's doing. But aside from that, um, most everything that I've been putting about Donald Trump has been negative, which is not real hard to do because he actually does it on his own and you just report the news. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in our country right now. Obviously, it's a battle for the soul of the nation. I did not come up with that line. That is a Joe Biden line. Um, but I have seen, and I certainly believe, uh, do you want democracy or do you want Trump? And there's so many people that are out there that would vote for him no matter what. And it's kind of frightening with everything that's been going on, or I should say frightening to me that's been going on with the passing of RBG to their, the Senate is going to confirm a new justice before the election. This is not done. Um, several years back, uh, before the Trump presidency, the Merrick Garland appointment was made by President Obama and Leader McConnell said, absolutely not. We will not entertain it. And, you know, this is the United States Senate. This is not Mitch McConnell's Senate. And that's a problem. And I think whatever happens with the presidential election, certainly you know my views. I did vote for Donald Trump in 2016 and shortly thereafter regretted it. Uh, and I still regret it even more today for a number of reasons, but I felt that I needed to share with you guys why I support Joe Biden. It's not just because I don't believe in Donald Trump, where that is certainly true, but why do I support Joe Biden? So I've got some talking points, bullet points, etc., and some reference material that I want to share with you. Um, certainly, you're going to have to do some research on your own if you decide to. Maybe your mind's already made up. I don't know. I have an audience that is on both sides of the aisle, uh, on all bands of the political spectrum from far right to far left. Um, we've got some alt-right that's in there. I know. We've got some QAnoners. We've got some Alex Jones or InfoWars folks. We've got all kinds of stuff that's in there. And that's one great thing about America, at least for now, that we have the right to free speech and we can say what we want. Now, you need to know that I have my feelings, you have your feelings, duh, we know that. But why are you always down on Donald Trump and why don't you do this? And then there's that crowd that is, you know, I'm going to lose my soul and I'm descending into evil and nope, church and state are separate. And that's a whole different episode and a whole different argument, but we're going to get into that here in just a little bit of why I am supporting Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So we'll talk about that shortly. We'll be right back. Say their names. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Sean Reed, Tony McDay, Alton Sterling. Say their names. Somebody please say their name. Philando Castile, Brent Thomas, Lauren Ahern, Michael Smith, say their name. Please, Trayvon Martin, Eric Gardner, Terrence Crutcher, Tamir Rice, Mike Brown, say their name. Freddie Gray, Antonio Martin, Walter Scott, Jamar Clark, Sandra Bland, please say their name. These are just a few that have lost their lives. Say their name. 
somebody please say their name. A person cannot be religious and indifferent to other human beings, plight, and suffering. Say their names. Please say their names. really is true that in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. And a lot of people think that that came from George Orwell's 1984 novel, which I believe it's been proven that that didn't really happen. Um, But, you know, that statement just on its own merits is true. Uh, I believe that I'm telling the truth in my broadcasts and on my website and in my social media, and boy, do I take heat for it, and that's okay. Um, We need to have a conversation, and I'm not always right. I admit that, Um, but my detractors are not always right either, and what usually happens, and I've done it in the past as well, but what usually happens is that if you can't back up what you're saying with facts, you attack the person's character. And that's what's happening here. And this is kind of just a little short op-ed piece um, about Miss Brianna Taylor. Definitely in the news this week, the grand jury decision came down this week uh, after 194 days. And you know what? Opinion and editorial, Brianna Taylor's life really didn't matter. It really didn't, Uh, because if it did, things would have been handled differently. Um, Regardless of your personal views, uh, you're certainly entitled to those. My view, her life did matter. Her life still matters. Black lives matter. All lives matter. You know, talking about attacking a person's character and you know there's several different things uh, YouTube videos and alt-right media and other sites that are coming out with all kinds of different things and well she was associated with this drug dealer and whatever and the research that I have done and I don't claim to have all the answers but all the answers clearly aren't there they're not in yet we don't know and But the grand jury sure made a decision, but I don't blame the grand jury because they acted on the information that they had, and we're going to know a lot more once the grand jury transcript is released. And trust me, it it will be released. You know, you talk about attacking a person's character, and, and from what I found, this was a relationship, a previous relationship, and she's a young, a, a young woman, and... People have relationships. It happens. And did she make some right choices? Probably. Did she make some bad choices? Maybe. I don't know. If you've made all good choices in your life, God bless you, because I haven't. But, you know, Maya Wiley uh, on MSNBC, Maya's an attorney, um, used to work in the Southern District of New York, pointed out that the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, these are the federal cops that handle the post office stuff. The U.S. Mail said there's no suspicious packages that went to her address that were associated with the former boyfriend with that address. That that didn't happen. That's not the case. You know, and, and but blame the character. She should have known better. Uh And then the whole thing ties in with that, well, it was an investigation, and that's where the warrant came from, and it was a knock warrant, and it was a no-knock warrant, and it was a, you know, Reverend Al Sharpton on MSNBC brought up, when did the principle of self-defense in this particular case start? Did the the principle of self-defense start when Kenneth Taylor felt that his 
domicile at the time, which was his girlfriend, Miss Taylor's apartment, when that domicile was being invaded, is that when the self-defense premise started? I think yes. He armed himself. And the testimony of the officers is that they did not knock and announce. And D.A. Cameron, no relation to me, said that they have sworn witness testimony that the officers did knock and announce. Yet, there are other witnesses that say no, they did not. So, if the principle of self-defense began when he felt that his domicile was being invaded, and that door came off, and the officers came in, again, allegedly announcing plain clothes, no body cameras, and it's in the middle of the night, 1 a.m.-ish in the morning, he's defending his domicile. He's defending his girlfriend. They're coming in. There's a commotion. He fires, and they return fire. The one officer fired 16 times let alone the other one went out and decided to fire in the other side of the building, and that's a whole different thing. That one was charged. But 16 times versus against one round that was reportedly shot as a warning shot. Now, we're, we're told that it did the one warning shot did strike the one officer, and we're certainly sorry for that. But 16 rounds? I'm not a police officer, have not been a police officer, but... If you're using a 15-round magazine and to get to that 16, you had to reload. Wow. That's a lot of ammunition. Wasn't there? Don't know. Just personal opinion. But when did self-defense start? Was it self-defense on Kenneth Taylor's part? He wasn't charged with anything. Or is it self-defense on the officer's part? Well... So far, it's self-defense on the officer's part. Now, in Louisville, there's riots, arson. Several Louisville police officers have been shot. That's terrible. I don't support that. Suspect in custody. Good. And there's a lot of other unrest in Louisville. I understand that some press has been arrested. That's not right. We have to have a free press. If they did something wrong and they assaulted the police and whatever, okay, I doubt that that happened. Oh, but wait now, it's BLM, it's Black Lives Matter, it's that movement, and it's the radical left, as Cheeto would tell you. I know I wasn't going to do that, but I can't help myself, because that's why you listen, because it's what is he going to say next. But you know, if you use that logic, if you use the BLM logic, that you're going to hold BLM responsible for the rioting and everything that goes with it, aren't you also going to hold the NRA responsible for all school shootings? Doesn't that make sense? BLM is a legitimate movement. Does it have people that come in from the outside? There was white and black militia members that were in Louisville as well prior to the verdict being announced. Is it the Antifa that everybody's talking about? Who knows? But if BLM is responsible for everything that's there with the rioting, and you're going to hold them responsible, then you should also hold the NRA responsible for every nutball that goes in and does a school shooting. There you go. I think I know what the general answer is going to be. So we got to wait it out. Let's see what the grand jury testimony says. Attorney General Cameron will not comment. He's a political, I'll call it a hack. Um, He's a prodigy of leader Mitch McConnell. No shocker there. Um, how, How was the case presented to the grand jury? Did... Attorney General Cameron present it? Did the local district attorney present it? I, I don't know, and that's not real important at this stage of the game. But how was it presented? Because the grand jury can only vote on the information that they have. 
Was it presented? Was all the information presented? And I think we're going to find out. And law, legal minds, shall we say, far better than mine, have said there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out. There's that old adage that a grand jury can get a ham sandwich indicted. We know that that's possible. We know that the burden of proof is different for a grand jury than for a regular jury. Um, And so we'll have to see what happens. Uh, There's also the thing of the city of Louisville paid the civil action to the Taylor family before the criminal action came down. That, historically, is just not done. What's going on? Was there a slam dunk case there? Did they want to take care of that before the other? I don't know. Things still have to come out. But Donald Trump is ready and willing. He's tweeting. Got the Twitter machine out. He's ready to send in his stormtroopers. Of course he is. Because it generates headlines and it sells newspapers. And that's what he is interested in doing. 40-some days before the election. Now, again, I do not support violence, rioting, looting, or arson. I support justice. That's why we're having this talk. That's why I'm sharing my opinion of what's happening here. I just couldn't. I was planning out this op-ed piece, and I was going to do it several days ago, and... I talked myself out of it thinking, you know, you're not going to change people's minds. And then it went several days and I said, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Because this stuff needs to come out. We need to say her name. Breonna Taylor. Say her name. The truth will come out. It's just a matter of time. So let's get back into Joe Biden and what's going on there. Why am I supporting Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? Well, the number one bullet point, I believe, is leadership in the time of COVID, leadership in the time of the coronavirus. It's no secret that our current leadership hasn't done anything isn't doing anything to Donald Trump and his minions. This is already done. This is gone. This is taken care of. I saw a report this morning that Florida, Governor Ron Disastrous, I'm sorry, Ron DeSantis, more like Ron Disastrous, is, has opened up the state. They can have the bars and the restaurants and such open at full capacity. The numbers are down. Well, of course the numbers are down because it's supported by not doing testing. Because Cheeto says that if you do less testing, you're going to have less cases. Joe Biden is going to ramp up testing and tracing. He has a plan. It's in writing at JoeBiden.com. All of these things I'm talking about, you can verify at JoeBiden.com. And He's going, he has a plan, which the Republicans don't have a plan, to ramp up testing and tracing, to hire tracers. He has a plan. The plan for the Republican Party, the plan for Donald Trump, we're all going to get it. Herd mentality, as he called it on the town hall. Herd mentality. Oh, you mean herd immunity for approximately 6 million people to be done away with by this virus in order to gain that. That is the plan. That is the plan of Dr. Atlas, the radiologist, sorry, neuroradiologist from Fox News that was added to the coronavirus task force. That's who President Cheeto is listening to. This man hasn't practiced medicine in 10 years. Admittedly, Stanford University, who he links himself up with, is on record of saying, we don't want to have anything to do with this guy. 
And this guy, at best, at best, giving him the benefit of the doubt, at best, is specially trained to read MRIs. He has no background in virology, in epidemiology, in public health, in anything like that. Wrong choice. So Biden and Harris have a plan for individuals with disabilities. Everyone should be treated with dignity and have a fair shot at getting ahead. You know, the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, celebrates its 30-year anniversary this year. I believe it's already passed. Happy birthday, ADA. He supports a plan for education beyond high school. He's going to invest in community colleges. Not everybody is going to be able to go to a four-year school. Not everybody is going to be able, nor can families afford to go to an Ivy League school. Nor is it really necessary to do that. He has, there's just so much I can say, and I want to keep it limited for this special Saturday, but we need to invest. Back in my day, and I'm a boomer, everybody knows that, and a lot of my listeners are boomers. We had regional occupational programs. We had shop classes. We had things. Kids were trained to do things that weren't going to go to college. Not everybody goes to college. I tease my daughter. She's going to be a plumber. She's probably not. She's very smart and is likely going to go to cosmetology school because that's what she wants to do. But so she doesn't get a four-year degree. So what? The other one is deciding whether she wants to go to law school or go to nursing school. And so she gets the four-year degree, more education than that, good for her. And you know what? If they didn't get any education beyond high school, okay. It doesn't make you a bad person, but we've got to invest in this. Biden and Harris have a plan to tackle the opioid crisis. It's terrible. We have had opioids around for a lot of years, but back when I worked in the healthcare field, when I was a first responder, when I was an essential worker, I had several patients die from opioid overdose. Several were self-inflicted. One was a guy who'd just come home from same-day surgery and took his prescribed medication, as directed because his wife was giving it to him, and had a heart attack. We need to tackle the opioid crisis. We can't keep throwing drugs at everything. Drugs are good, but there's other things besides opioids. He has a plan. Immigration. I could go on for days and days and days. We need to secure our values. This is Joe talking. We need to secure our values as a nation of immigrants. Everybody came from someplace. Putting kids in cages is wrong but Obama did it. You know, that is the usual rant of Republicans when they don't want to hear something that President Trump did. I've done the best economy. I've taken this. We inherited nothing in the federal stores. The closet was empty. Again. Kids don't belong in cages. Kids belong with their parents. We need to treat people properly, all people. He has a plan for providing health care for Americans. He wants to protect the ACA, the Affordable Health Care. I'm sorry, the, yes, the Affordable Care Act. Health care is an important part of living. I personally feel that there should be universal health care. But that's just me. Biden was an integral part of the ACA even getting passed. But you know why President Trump wants to get rid of it? Because it's something that Obama did. That's why it has to go. They're in court right now to get rid of it. They want to get rid of the pre-existing conditions clause. That's going to throw millions of people off of their health care. And it's going to make health care not available, let alone not affordable, but not available to a number of people. 
That's just wrong. Biden and Harris have a plan to make it work. They want to end the gun violence epidemic, don't we all? Now, one of the things that upsets the Red Hats is they propose a ban and a possible buyback on assault weapons. What do you need that type of weapon for? You ain't going to take my guns. What do you need it for? Are you in the military? You'll be issued one. If you're not in the military, what do you need it for? Are you hunting with it? I don't think so. Are you carrying it around at peaceful protest? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now, should everybody have a gun? No. And they don't want that either. Universal background checks. Everybody. Everybody. Let me say that one more time. Everybody. You don't just get to transfer it to a private person to a private person. You don't just get to buy it at a gun show. If you're not background checked, you shouldn't have a gun. There needs to be red flag laws. If you're a felon, you don't get a gun. If you've got a domestic violence history, you don't get a gun. Now, there's that thing, that argument, which in some ways I believe that if you take away the guns from the law-abiding citizens, only the outlaws will have guns. And I think that's true. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and me are not saying take guns away from everybody. Just make sure those that have them are using them properly, are properly trained, and are, let's say, worthy to have that. Certain people just shouldn't have them. Again, if you're going to hold the BLM responsible for protest violence, aren't you going to hold the NRA responsible for school shootings? Let's talk about equality. Let's talk about the LGBTQ plus society. Everybody is a person. Come on. The House passed the Equality Act. And Mitch McConnell refused to bring it up. There's a shocker. And I read an article the other night, doesn't matter where I read it, that Christians feel that they may be discriminated against because of this. Well, what about the LGBTQ plus community? What about that? Now, don't get this confused with pedophilia. Pedophilia is a crime, and I don't support it, and neither do they. But that's an easy thing to bring in for the Republicans and the, especially the alt-right. Well, they want pedophilia. No, they don't, and neither do I. Everybody should have equal rights. They have a plan for economic racial equality. People of color should not be paid less or have lesser chances of employment than white people. Come on. Yes, some of the things that we have in our society right now are socialism. Did the fire truck come out and take care of your house if it was on fire? Did the paramedics come out and take care of you when you had a heart attack? Did you drive on a freeway today? Did you walk on a sidewalk today? Did you? That's all socialism. Socialism leads to communism. Says who? Says who? You know what is a fact, though? that capitalism leads to racism because we've proved it. We've absolutely proved it. You know, I support Joe Biden because he's a family man. He's been through tragedy, personal tragedy, losing his wife and a child and then losing an older child to cancer. I saw an article the other night that Joe said that after the crash that took his wife and his child away from him, that he had said that the truck driver was intoxicated and it was proven that the truck driver was not. Joe reversed himself on that. He was upset when he was talking. He just lost some family. I hope you haven't been through a personal tragedy like that. 
I've lost family members. And I know how that feels. He's a man of faith, a deep man of faith. He went and visited his son's gravesite while Cheeto went and played golf. You know, for all of these points and more information, you can go to JoeBiden.com. Check it out. Those are my views just based on the things from his website. But that's why, to answer your question, whether you asked or not, because you know you were, how can I support Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? Well, that's why. The presidential debate is Tuesday night coming up. Most coverage is starting at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I'm in central time, so it's 7. And we're looking at doing a follow-up episode on the broadcast here post-debate. So stay tuned, and we'll see what happens in the debate. Cheeto is saying that Joe's going to get a shot, and it's going to keep him going. (laughs) They've been talking about live fact-checking, which I think would be amazing. And Chris Wallace who I admire him, and I also admired his father, Mike Wallace, is going to do an awesome job. And Trump isn't going to get off the hook, but he's going to try. So you watch. Is Joe going to say everything absolutely perfect? No. He had a stuttering problem, and he overcame it. Let's try and get a complete sentence out from Mr. Trump speak. So that's going to do it for us today, guys. Remember, disagree doesn't mean dislike, and it certainly doesn't mean disrespect. My goodness. Hey, wear a mask. Stay home if you can. Social distance if you can't stay home and wash your hands often because this thing is real. It is here. It's not going to magically go away if President Trump wins re-election. Because we want you back next time when we continue the conversation one podcast at a time. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining us in Papa Jeff's America. Papa Jeff's America is recorded live at OG Studios in Houston, Texas, and is a production of Cameron Communications. Special thanks and musical credit to Texas Radio Fish, Galveston County, Texas, online at ccmixter.org. Please subscribe to our podcast at papajeffusa.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out our website at papajeffusa.com where you can drop us an email, check out other episodes of our podcast, or you can link to all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and soon our new YouTube channel. And you can also call or text us at 281-940-6980. Thanks again for joining us. We're looking forward to seeing you next time when we continue the conversation one podcast at a time.